and welcome to Legal Management Talk, the official podcast of the Association of Legal Administrators. I am your host today, Valerie Danner. Today's guest is someone many of you are familiar with. We have James Cornell. He's a past president of ALA and is currently Director of Office Administration at Shook, Hardy, and Bacon. James, welcome to the show. Hi, Valerie. How are you? It's great to be with you on Legal Management uh, Talk. Yes. We're excited to have you. Um, So we've got a bit of a heavy but vital topic on deck today, um, mental health. Back in 2021, James was very kind and very vulnerable and open um, to write an article on his own struggles with mental health. Um, And I'll put that link to the article in the show notes if anybody wants to check it out to read it further. It'll be there. Um, But I think stories like his are a way to connect with everybody in general in the legal community specifically where it's, it's hard to talk about these things. Um, I know I feel uncomfortable having this conversation out of just, just, I think it's just the topic in general. Um, and I appreciate you coming on here, being willing to talk about it. And as full disclosure, I myself, since my teens have had depression and anxiety issues. So I feel like it's only fair that I admit to that as well. (laughs) So. Thanks for saying that, Valerie. It, um, it's challenging and I appreciate your vulnerability in this, uh, and this format, right? Um, I, um, I I have discomfort uh, having this conversation today. I think I had discomfort in writing uh, the article for legal management in 2021. And I think that's the reason that we're here to have this conversation, honestly, is because it's an uncomfortable topic. And yet, it's an incredibly important topic. And really, our discomfort speaks to the stigma that mental health and well-being have or mental illness have in our society. And I think in particular, we're here to talk about um, the legal industry and our law firms. It is, um, I will say from the article, uh, you know, we we worked on that article together and I think you gave me maybe a thousand word or 1500 word count and I came back to you and said, here, I have 4,500. What do we do with this? Um, there was a lot to say. And somewhere in that was opening up um, how I felt and actually feeling comfortable to share. And um, that article was a great way of doing that. But having said that, um, I've had lots of opportunities over the last couple of years to speak publicly about mental health, to speak specifically about that article, and to share my story. And every time I start to have that conversation, there is that moment inside of me where I pause and I ask myself, do you really want to be honest with this audience? And you, you take that breath and you're paused in that moment and saying, do I feel comfortable really being honest and vulnerable about how I felt or how I'm feeling? And um, I mean, in all honesty, there are days I measure it. And then there are days that I lean into it and I and I share. So I appreciate you saying that about yourself and um, giving us this opportunity to talk today because um, I don't think it gets any easier until we uh, become more comfortable and familiar with having these types of conversations professionally. Mm-hmm. And um, and we talk about why the stigma exists specifically in our legal industry about um, mental health and mental well-being. Definitely. Um, and I think noting the discomfort that we're having, I think this conversation will help a lot of people. And I have no doubt you'll be hearing from people who are grateful that you've opened up. So I do want to start by asking, because you were very open in the article, um, just asking how you're doing. It's been a few years since we've talked about this. Yeah, I think um, that, that's a great question. And, and and it's a question we use often, right? How are you doing? And our our standard response is, oh, I'm great. Um, yeah, everything's I'm fine. good. I'm fine. Uh, yeah, or fine. I love that one. Um, if we weren't on a legal management talk podcast, I might tell you what I think that acronym actually stands for. We could use the word "fine" as an acronym, um, but we'll 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 leave this PG rated. <laughs> yeah, and, don't don't mess with our rating on a. <laughs> um, so you know, I think I want to set the stage maybe re- briefly and just take a step back and say in 2019. I had the incredible honor and privilege to serve as the association's president. And, um, you know, something I 
I'm not sure I ever really fully imagined uh, being able to to do. Um, and that came at a time when I was also relocating from Austin, uh, Texas, where I would spent basically my entire professional career to Washington, D.C., a city I had no connection to other than this new job I was also starting. So it was in the midst of great transition that I became president of ALA. And then I was I began traveling and I just had a lot of responsibilities and I was spending a lot of time um, on the road and hotel rooms and alone and in cities where I didn't know anyone and didn't have a support network. And um, that took a toll on me. And the reality was, I didn't feel like I had anyone that I could talk to on a day-to-day basis to really say how I felt. And so what I found happening to me was just isolation, was more and more of that sort of um, closing in or closing off from people and not being honest about how I felt. So when people ask, how are you doing? I, the answer was, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm uh, I'm here today. I'm there tomorrow. You know, we're doing great things with the ALA board. This is a great opportunity. I didn't want to admit to anyone that this wonderful experience wasn't so wonderful. And it wasn't because there was anything inherently wrong with being president or having a new job or living in a great city. It was um, a lot of change and a lot of transition that was happening in my life and personally as well that just created me being not well. And I think for the first time in my life, I was really confronted with this isn't um, about a day or a week. This is about a month. And then it became about a year. So, um, you know, we we write an article and we get to have oh, a lot of really good conversations. Then that really resulted in me finding a good counselor and spending some time in counseling. Um, quite a bit of time, actually, in 2020 and 2021. And I made such great improvements in my perspectives and in, um, I think, how I viewed my work and how I was viewing myself. And so, I, you know, things were going really well. Um, but I think mental well-being, mental health is not necessarily a linear thing. Mm-hmm. That It's a journey. And um, like a lot of journeys, there's maybe good parts and bad parts or ups and downs, twists and turns. And so, um, that's life for us. And I think... Um, and in those couple of years, the last couple of years, I've had some um, really great days, and really good times. I've been successful. Uh, I've enjoyed my time uh, away from ALA, uh, having a nice break from what was a long, um, wonderful leadership experience. And then I find myself in 2023 20, uh, with a very recent promotion with my Congratulations. Firm. Thank you. Um, With a very recent relocation from Washington, D.C. to Southern California, um, a a different uh, group of people I'm working with, even though I'm within the same firm. And so uh, I would say like maybe the last four or five months of my life has felt incredibly familiar and similar to 2019 and 2020. So I come back to you asking me, uh, reaching out uh, and asking me to have this conversation. And I think for me, it was, uh, again, right time, right place for for us to have this conversation about something that's important. Because personally, I think it, I'm, I'm back in that place of having some challenges and struggles with um, new city, new role, um, you know, no connections to a place that you live and um and you're trying to establish all those things because in my mind community is one of the most important aspects of mental well-being and mental health yeah. and whether we like it or not or whether we're in a hybrid work environment we spend a great deal of time in the office and the people that we work with even though sometimes we might not consider those people to be friends they're they're close colleagues and they're people that get to know us and they're people that we want to have vulnerability with and be able to share what we're doing. And and let's face it, oftentimes how we feel impacts how we show up and how we work. And um, the, work that we, the work that we do in law firms um, and in our legal management roles is important. And so when we're not our best selves, it's hard to do our best work. So uh, admittedly, Living in Southern California is wonderful. Uh, there's a lot of sunshine. The weather's terrific. 
Um, you got the ocean right there. At the, at the ocean, uh, there's a lot of pluses. That does hasn't necessarily translated to bright blue skies for me um, every day. And so um, I think spending some time thinking about this conversation that we're we're having is had me looking inward a little bit more. Um, I've sort of gotten comfortable not doing that. And I don't know. I think for me, I'm I'm probably back in that place where I, I need to be thinking more about myself and uh, and taking care of myself and maybe getting a tune up, if you will, so that I can um, continue to be who I am and feel good about that and not feel, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't, I felt anxious in ways that I haven't um, a lot in my uh, previously. And um, depression is a term I'm not sure I like using, but I think it's just because it makes me uncomfortable. So um, when everything's supposed to be good and happy and you don't feel that way, um, you start to think, well, uh, why is that? So, uh, I mean, it, I guess it does have that connotation where there's something broken, but I don't necessarily think it's broken as much as it's just, you know, there was a Madonna song and I can't think of it off the top of my head, but there, she has a line in there. Pain is a warning that something is wrong. And I think that it's a form of pain and it's your signal to focus and to figure that out. So I'm glad to hear that you've done some work on that. Um, and given that you're in this a, a familiar state, if you will, um, I'm hearing a lot of what sounds like burnout a bit too. Um, what are you doing to take care of yourself? Yeah, I mean, I think a burnout is such a, a topic that's become so much more prevalent in our in our industry. You read a lot of articles um, and a lot of publications about burnout. Um, I, I think that's the real challenge is um, people... Um, in jobs, I think our employers oftentimes are looking for ways to um, leverage the talent that they work with. And so um, I, I have a little bit of a joke and it's maybe not even funny, but uh, it's it's the idea of, you know, what do you get for winning a pie eating contest when you're in a law firm or any industry? But I'll say a law firm. Mm -hmm. and, and the prize is more pie to eat. So, <laughs> And an upset I, stomach. I think that that, um, that speaks to what we do, which is um, there is a tendency for people to feel overworked. And there's a tendency for people to have um, an overburden of responsibility. And oftentimes, I feel like in a, as a legal management professional, we are somewhat isolated in our roles. So... You may work for a firm that has um, a bunch of human resource professionals or legal management professionals or administrative professionals in your office that are your colleagues and you can relate to. Or maybe you're an office administrator in a, in a, in a satellite office or regional office, and you're the only person really on that administrative side who's responsible for the well-being of this group of people you work with. And you have no real peer. And so it makes it challenging to feel like you have a place to go to sometimes relate with people or to be able to share a struggle. Um, you have people you may be leading and the vulnerability of telling people you're leading that you're not well feels really scary. You have um, the attorneys that you're working with. Maybe that's an office managing partner or other partners in the organization and admitting to them that you're not feeling well feels like an admission of maybe weakness or failure. And our, our industry is sort of built on the concept of perfectionism. And that perfectionism is challenging. So I don't know, I haven't really created a, um, a way that I feel like I can not feel um, the desire to need to be perfect in what I do. So what I try to do are do the things that uh, help me feel like a whole person. And um, one of the nice things about being in a place like Southern California is you can be outdoors. So mm -hmm. I enjoy being outside. I like to hike. I like to run. Uh, I love music. And so sometimes even something as simple as listening to music, I really identify with or that fits how I'm feeling helps me to feel better. But honestly, um, 
if I'm not mindful about what I'm doing, work will pull me in and, you know, I will look up and it'll be the end of the day. It'll be dark outside and I'll, I'll end the day without having done any real things for me. And so I do think that is the challenge. Um, and what drives people to be successful is they want to work really hard, but then it comes at the expense of your own well-being. And right. I think that's how we oftentimes end up in situations where we're not well and uh, we're not sure why. We don't know how we got here. Uh, that was me, at least. Like, how did this happen? Um, so I, I feel I picture a lot of people nodding their heads right now as they're listening to this. So I, I wish I had more of a sense of how how to manage burnout. I wish I could tell you that I would, you know, take a, a vacation to Tahiti, spend a week on the beach, and I would feel better. Uh, but the reality is, I, I think uh, our our legal uh, our ALA colleagues and others will laugh and say, "My phone, my you know my uh, my work phone would be right next to me while I was sitting on that beach, and I would be checking email and making sure that things were going okay." So. Um, that's a challenge. I, I I wish as an industry and I wish as a law for law firms, we could figure out how to lessen the workload, understand what the root cause is of someone who's experiencing burnout and then be able to address that. So we don't put the responsibility on the person to understand or to figure out why they're burned out that the law firm, the legal organization and the legal management professional the lawyer, anyone in a law firm have the opportunity to work on that together. And it's not any person's or entity's sole responsibility for that. Well, I think a dialogue like this goes a long way to helping too. It puts it all out on the table. Like, here's the issue. How can we address it? So one thing ALA has been doing is um, every quarter they host uh, mental health first aid. Um, I was fortunate to be able to attend one of the sessions um, earlier this summer. And they give you an action plan. It's called ALGE. And the L stands for to listen. And that was my main takeaway of that whole... I mean, it's it's a great program. It's very intensive. Um, but that was the takeaway of... You have a sense of when someone is off their game or something is going on. Like your spidey sense will feel it. So my main takeaway was to be available to that person, check in with them. Um, you can't obviously force them to talk, but just let them know that you're going to listen and be a non-judgmental source. So I wonder, as you find yourself wading through things now and struggling a bit, what are some things your colleagues could do? Yeah, I think you hit the, the nail on the head, Valerie. Uh, being, being present and being empathetic, we hear that word a lot, but it comes down to being somewhere um, with someone where you can listen. And um, it's not, it's not in the moments in between emails or the moments in between zoom meetings or in-person meetings. It's, it's the opportunity to really sit and listen to someone um, and hear them and, and be there for them. Because I think oftentimes um, we, as the person who may be doing the listening or talking to someone who may not be doing well, feel like we need to somehow help solve that problem. And I think the reality is the person that has the problem isn't necessarily looking for someone to solve it. They're just looking for someone to be there with them, to listen to them, to, um, you know, be, talk it through. to talk it through. I, um, I'm thinking about a, uh, our, our good ALA friend, Michael Cohen, uh, who is with uh, Dwayne Morris and, and, you know, is a frequent ALA speaker and contributor. Um, he was telling a story I heard one time and it was uh, focusing on uh, uh, on mental health. And uh, this, the story starts with the this guy who's he's in a bad place. He's in a dark spot and literally um, in a hole, if you will. And um, he sees his uh, doctor walk by and he yells out to his doctor, hey, doctor, is there anything you can do to help me? And the doctor writes out a prescription and throws it down in the hole. And it doesn't do anything. And the guy's still sitting down there and he sees his, uh, his minister walk by and he asks, minister, is there anything you can do for me that would, would help for me? And he says, I, absolutely. I'll say, I'll write a prayer for you. I'll say a prayer. He writes a prayer and throws it down in the hole. 
doesn't do any good. He sees his good friend walk by and he yells out and he says, hey, I'm down in this hole. Can you? Is there anything you can do for me? His good friend jumps down in the hole with him and he says, hey, what are you doing? Like, what, you know, why are you down in here? Now we're both stuck down in this place, in this dark place. And, and he said, that's OK. He's like, I've been in this place, too, before, and I know how to get out of here. So I think for so many of us, we we get into that spot and we don't know um, where the answer is, because I think if we did, we try to solve our problems. And well, everybody else is, too. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. But but I think it's oftentimes it's that person that's listening that gives some perspective that may have, like yourself, been through difficult times, um, um, loss, you know, all of those things that give some perspective to those of us who maybe haven't been through that before and, and need someone to help walk us out of that hole. So, uh, again, I'm not suggesting we put the responsibility of solving that problem on the person that's listening, but I think there's an enormous impact that that person can have when you bring someone else into the conversation. Definitely. And I think it just goes back to your part about community and how important that is. There's a reason that I find that so helpful as well. It can get you out of those places, just talking through things. Like to your point, I, one of the kindest things someone ever did for me when I was having a particularly tough time like I went out to dinner with my friends and he just reached across the table and squeezed my hand to let me know he was thinking of me and there for me. So I think sometimes we're so paralyzed thinking we're going to say the wrong thing and it keeps us from saying anything. And I think the moral is just if you're sensing something's wrong, then check in. It's, you know, it, it's, it's a kind thing to do. Yeah, I agree. I think if there were any thoughts that um, I would want to leave the audience with or that we could take forward it would be um to shift the conversation and the dialogue about mental health from stigma to support to this idea that we're all likely going to experience these types of episodes whether it's again a week a month a year there are seasons of our lives that are hard and challenging and i think many of us simply don't acknowledge them for what they really are, and that is just a mental health challenge that we are we that we're struggling, and uh, we aren't who we generally are. So, moving away from making that a stigma to being there's something wrong with you, or you're somehow not capable, or um, you're not perfect. To how can we help you? Because we believe in you, we know you, we want you to be your whole person. It's hugely important. And I, the key to that, in my mind, again, is just not being isolated. Um, I think back to my own situation, and I just felt like I was further and further away from people, so much so that I was no longer even honest about anything. Like, just the conversations were just like, oh, I'm good. I'm great. And how inauthentic. How inauthentic of me as a friend to not be honest with my friends. Um, and how silly of me to not... Um, presume that someone might be able to offer a word of support or a touch, a squeeze of a hand, whatever it would be that could help. Definitely. Um, James Cornell, I cannot thank you enough for coming on today and having this conversation. I think your words will really mean a lot to a lot of people. Well, thanks, Valerie. I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, thank you again for inviting me to be here for uh opening up the opportunity to talk about this uh, a second time. I'm not sure if there's a, another form of media we might consider in the future, <laughs> but uh, I'll- uh, We can I'll do a live through. broadcast at the next I'll, annual conference. I'll, yeah, I'll look, for your, uh, I'll look for your call on that. But again, thank you for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure to speak with I you. I think it speaks to that we just need to continue the conversation. Well, thank you for, um, thank you and ALA and legal management for continuing to do that. Absolutely. And thanks to all of you for tuning into this episode. To get the latest uh, legal management talk, be sure to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts or to check us out on YouTube. Until next time. Mm -hmm.